All right, we're going to show you how to uh, make self-sealing injection port lids for doing your mycology experiments and, and projects. And we'll just start with, uh, I like to use wide mouth lids for all of my work. You don't have to, uh, but I prefer them because it's easier to get my hands inside the jars to clean things out and easier to get things broken loose and whatnot. And you'll take about, the first thing I did was I, I screwed a, a ring down to the board that I'll be drilling into because it makes it very easy to hold the, the um, lid steady while you're cutting. If you try and do it by hand, if you try and hold one down by hand and cut it, the bit will grip it and make it spin around and I have cut my thumb pretty good on the edge of a lid trying to hold it in place while I was drilling a hole. And you're going to draw, you're going to cut two holes basically on opposite um, sides of the jar. One will be for the vent and one will be for the self-sealing injection port. And you actually, I think, want to put the, the one for the vent a little bit closer to the center. It doesn't have to be real precise. You just want to kind of know where the lid's going to sit. Most of the time you'll be using the, them upside down, and so this is will be the side you'll see. And you, you want it in far enough that, it, that you're not going to be ending up putting the, the self-sealing injection port out too far. So... About a, you can center the hole about a half an inch in uh, from the, the dip in the jar lid. And you want to take a hole punch or an awl of some kind and, or a nail and you want to kind of pre-punch the holes so that you have a place for the bit to to get a grip on. Yeah, I know I'm not going through all the layers, but you get the idea. And you want them all to be lined up. So that was probably not a good idea to take that apart before you start drilling. And I have some uh, some holes in the wood already. You don't want to necessarily drill onto a, a flat wood surface. You want a hole underneath where you're going to drill because as you as you drill through it's going to form little discs of metal that break off and those will kind of stack up as you go through more and more levels. And by the time you get to the bottom one you won't be able to cut through the bottom thing unless there's a hole someplace for that metal to push. Now I use a, a 3 8 inch bit, I think you go much bigger than that and you have a greater risk of creating a lot of burrs in a really uneven hole. Smaller than that is really too small to be practical in my experience. So, pretty sure that's 3 8 Yep, 3 8 A little closer. Oh, excuse me. 15 sixteenths, so 3 eighths is a little bit too big. So this is a 15 sixteenths inch bit. Good thing I checked that. Don't want to give you bad advice. It's not wanting to cut through the bottom one, um, which is usually the case. Now, as, as is often the case when you're drilling through relatively thin metal, there's quite a bit of burring there. That's That can really snag you good, and uh, you don't really want that there. So you, if you've got a grinding wheel or a uh, round file or something, 
I have a, a Dremel, it's probably the easiest way. And so I'll grind all these down and then we'll move on to the next step. When you're using these in the jars, this, the top will actually be facing down into the, the grain or the substrate that's in the jars. You're going to want to, this, this surface will tend to rust if you don't paint it. So I've got some uh, high temperature engine paint. Uh, it's good up to 550 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, we'll never get above 250 degrees Fahrenheit in the use of this. Um, but you, you want to get it uh, a high temperature paint so that it's not going to come off. And if during the processing, uh, during the grinding, you've, you've nicked around here, it's probably not a bad idea to touch that up with a little bit of paint too. a couple of these. Oh, this one I nicked pretty good. And then just give them a good coat. Be sure you get as, get it into the, um, the holes, the edges of the holes, because this is kind of a, a rust proofing process as much as anything. And then we'll just let those dry overnight and uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll do the final step. The process for <coughs> Uh, finishing up these lids is going to involve uh, just some plain like printer paper cut into approximately one inch squares, three quarter inch to one inch squares. So I'm going to do that real quick. doesn't have to be a real precise process, <coughs> but yeah, too big and it gets unwieldy and too small and they just don't work, so. All right, once your paper strips are cut, you want to get your lid, and I like to use a, a ring to do this on so I don't get stuff all over the table. And you'll need some uh, red RTV silicon. You can get this at any auto shop, any auto uh, supply sh store. And it's, uh, it's, it's basically a gasket maker. Uh, it makes kind of a, a nearly perfect um, self-injecting port, or self-sealing injection port. And that's a new tube. I'm going to finish up an old tube here. And what you want to do is around one of the holes you want to basically lay a bead around the outside of the hole and then into the middle. And then take a piece of paper one of these little pieces of paper and put that against it and just kind of flatten it out. And you want the, each side to be not quite an eighth of an inch thick. Um, and going around the circle, around the hole first with the RTV um, silicon will help you get a good even... Uh -oh. <laughs> Well, it looks like we're going to have to do some additional painting on this one. This is a ball lid as opposed to a cur lid, and it does not have paint on the underside. So, or maybe it's just an older lid, I don't know. So there you have paper on either side, and then you just let that dry overnight, and I'll show you the final stages after this. I'm going to do a whole bunch of these 
And basically, what I like to do is, is stack them staggered like this so that there's nothing resting on the on the paper. Let's get one. Yeah, this is how it should have looked. And you want to keep a napkin or a paper towel handy and wipe this stuff off. It's pretty easy to clean up while it's wet, but once it's dry, it adheres to just about anything pretty well. After you've left these to dr uh, the self-sealing injection ports to dry overnight, you just carefully peel the paper off. You should have a good flat surface. Do that on both sides. Okay. And then to finish it up, you'll you want to cut a strip of polyfill about an inch and a half wide approximately and and you want to roll it really tightly until it's about the, the, the thickness of the roll is about the thickness of the hole of the diameter of the hole then you're going to fold it in half like this and pull the top over and what this does is it creates a very smooth surface for the inside of the jar so that you won't have gra uh, grains or other things uh, clinging to it. And it's a bit of a process to get these in once you get this part done through the hole. But you want a very snug fit. And since this is the side that will be facing the grain, the inside, and then you want the seal side up when you're doing grain stuff. You're going to work it in from this side. And this is the tricky part. The hard part is squeezing it enough to get it through the, and pushing it through that little tiny hole. I may have actually put too much on this, just a little bit. But if you've, uh, if you've rolled it up really tight and folded it tight and pinch it real good, you should be able to get it started well enough. Once you can get a hold of it on the other side, you can pull. You know what? I made that just a little bit too big. Let's back it up just a little bit. There we go. There we go. That should, I should be able to get that in now. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we should start over with this one. Let's try that one more time. Oh, there we go. 
we go. Now it's coming through. You want a good snug fit. This might even be a little bit too tight, but because all this does is allows oxygen and CO2 to exchange and you really have very little airflow through it. Um, it's just an exchange of partial pressure. So I've got some excess here. I can just trim off. And the, the inside will be reasonably rounded and then you can just kind of flatten it out a little bit. And there you have a finished lid with a self-sealing injection port.